Glad to see every one of you here tonight on a Wednesday night. We got, a, I think, four Wednesday nights before the new year. And what we want to do is end strong and then begin really strong. We want to make sure that, that we don't fizzle into the new year. We want to be celebrating. We want to be walking in victory. We want to, like, develop some. Don't wait for the new year to start saying, okay, when the new year comes, I'm going to make some changes. The best time to make a change is right now. Make it now. The truth is, if you keep putting it off and procrastinating, this is what I learned about procrastination. It costs you more. It takes more time. And then it, what happens, it develops a habit that you got to break. So the best thing to do is when you know there's a th something needs to change, change it now. Change it right now. Just say, right now, I'm going to make some changes with God's help. Let's give God some praise. We're going to end strong. We're going to end strong. Let's go ahead and bring it, pop it up, please. This is what we're doing is we're allowing God to change our lives. And then this is what we do. We say, God, use us to change other people's lives. If you really want to fulfill life, you're going to have to resist all selfishness. Um, and, and when I say that, it, it's so easy to focus on what we're going through and ignore everything around us. And be careful that you're not one of those people that says this, when my life is all together, then I'll go ahead and help somebody else. But this is what I've learned. Forget about getting your whole act together. If there's people hurting around you, help them right there in the middle of your mess. And I've learned when you do that, it fixes you. Do you know that God will send you troubled people in your trouble? Not to bring you more trouble, but to deliver you from your trouble. You know, they, they, I've, I've just seen this that, uh, you know, you, you, there's times you're going through something and that person that you're helping is going to encourage you in your situation because you're going to be surprised how much you know. You're going to be counseling, hey, don't give up. And you're, you're talking to yourself, don't give up. You can do it. You say, I can do it. And you'll really be surprised by the time you're minister, ministering to them, your, your situation is handled. You're set free. So God doesn't use perfect people to do a work. He just uses available people. Is there anybody available? Say, God, bring me some troubled people. And if you know trouble and you've gone through it, maybe that, the reason God's sending you to those people is because you'll have mercy. You know, God can't use people that think they have it all together because they become prideful. Do you know, do you, I, and, and maybe, maybe, man, I've been struggling this week. Uh, join the club. I mean, every, I mean, everybody, we're in a fight. That's why it's called a fight of faith. And I know we have the joy of the Lord, but how many know we're in a real fight every day? It's real. And, and while, you're, while you're in your fight and you're fighting your fight of faith and you fall down, but you get up. We fall down, but we get up, right? You fall down, but you get up and you get back up and you get back up and you get back up. And then God sends you someone that's fallen down a lot more than you fell down. And you say, man, I know where you are. I've been there, but God has helped me to be more stable and strong. And how he's helped me, let me give you what I got. Now, now the reason I'm saying that, you got to be careful with the spirit of the devil of condemnation. Uh, the, the devil's job is to make you feel that no matter what you do, it's never good enough, that you're a failure, that you're not a great believer. Look at you. And he points out every negative thing about you. Be careful that you're not partnering up with the devil. Stop agreeing with him and start saying, no, 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 we're going to stop this right now because this is not helping my joy. This is not helping my peace. This self-talk has to stop right now. I am a new creation in Christ. I might not be where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Devil, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. And one day I'm going to heaven. I have hope in my situation. I know you don't, but I do. Self-talk is super important. Uh, be careful that you're not waiting for someone to talk you off the cliff. You're going to have to learn how to talk yourself off the cliff. Because there's going to be times in your life, there's no one going to be there. You're going to be, and the devil's going to be telling you there's no one here. And you got to be saying, no, 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 there is somebody here. God is here. 
and God is in me, and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, and all things are working out for good according to his purpose and his plan. So I, I know this, it's, it's going to work out for good. Now, you don't know how it's going to work out, but you know at the end, if I just keep on loving God and just keep on showing up and keep on praising God and keep on just getting back up, this is what's going to happen. By the end, it's going to be good. How many know your life is headed for good, not disaster? Come on, you got to start celebrating that right now. You got to believe it. My life is headed for good, not disaster. My greatest impact is not behind me. And I got, I got to talk to somebody else today. You, you are so focused on what you lost in the past, you've lost a vision of a future. And this is what God is saying. You lost whatever you lost in the past. It, it, you're thinking, man, I lost this. I lost this. And you're so infatuated by what you lost, you can't receive what God's ready to give you. And this is, the Bible says, my people perish not for lack of vision. Vision has to do with your future. And God is saying right now, someone needs to get delivered from the past mistakes you've made, your losses of your past. And God says, it's time to end that right now. And we're going to start, come on, will you allow me to give you a picture of your future? Your future is going to be way better than your past. Even if it was good, your future is going to be great. Give God a little praise. Come on, God's prophetically speaking to you now. It's God in you. It's God in you that's powerful. Right? I mean, uh, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Even if I feel weak and God says, don't worry about it. That's where I come in. And just let God strengthen you. It's okay. And I'm going to say one more thing. It's okay to ask for help, guys. Don't act like you have it all together when you don't. You know, I just, well, I'm going to fake it till I make it. Sometimes you can't fake it. You got to ask somebody. Right now I'm struggling with something. Let's be honest with this. And I need some help to get over this hump or get through this mountain. And the Bible says two, one will chase a thousand. But cook up with somebody that will believe with you and you'll chase away 10,000. We're going to end this year strong. I'm telling you, come to church every Wednesday. Come on. You could start a, you could start a winning streak on Wednesdays and Sundays. Come to church. And, and, and Sunday we're going to be coming together. And we're even going to give an offering to the Lord so he could expand his mission here on earth to reach more people. How many understand that's what it's all about? For these next few moments and for these next few moments, I want to I wanna talk about about this, this law that's in the Bible. It's called, um, it's a, a law of seed time and harvest. And what, what it talks about is, and if you learn this law, you can make it work for you. Um, this law can work for you or it can work against you. Now these are, are spiritual laws, but they're also natural laws. And any farmer or any person that studies science will agree with this law. And you, no matter, you can say, I don't believe it. It doesn't matter. It's a law. And when it's a law, it's going to work for you or against you. It's better to learn the law and work with it than stay ignorant of the law and wondering why is my life turning out the way it's turning out. I got some good news for you. You don't need to be a victim because of this law of seed time and harvest. You could start now sowing the right seed and producing the right harvest. God has given you dominion over your life. In a sense, he's given you authority to choose. Somebody, I'm going to understand that. I can choose what seed I'm going to plant. Therefore, I could choose what harvest I'm going to get. Some of you are hopeless because you're dependent on people outside of you to fix your life. And God's saying, or you're, you're dependent on someone fixing their life to make your life better. And God says, stop focusing on the outside and start focusing on your personal responsibility and sow the right seed. And you don't have to worry about the harvest. The harvest will take care of itself. How many understand that? You sow good seed, you have a good life. Say it with me. We sow good seed, we have a what? Good life. We sow bad seed, we have a what? Now, now, now understand, don't get mad if someone has a good life and they're sowing good seed. Don't get jealous because it's a law. It'll work for you too if you just start changing your seed. Change your seed, change your life. Change your words, change your life. Change your thoughts, change your life. Change your actions, change your life. Ch come on, change, come on. Just change, change your seed and you'll change your life. Now, this is going to empower you. Uh, I want you, it's going to empower you because I'm gonna, God's going to show you 
what he's made available to you. So let's go ahead and pray. Let's study this, this, these truths about seed time and harvest. Father, I'm th- asking you to teach us, Lord. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you, Lord, to speak through me to make this clear and clean and un- so we can understand it and apply it to their lives. So, Father, Holy Spirit, we welcome you as our master teacher today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's turn to Scripture. And if you hear something that's right, just say, you can say amen. If you hear people saying amen, if you hear for the first time, they're just saying, that's true. Or let it be in my life too, right? <laughs> Genesis 8.22, it says, as long as the earth continues. Uh, I, this is what it's saying. It's a law that is ready to introduce. And as, as long as the earth continues, this law will be in effect. I mean, it's just always. There will always be a time for planting and a time for harvest. There will always be cold and hot, summer and winter, day and night on earth. The scriptures just describe in life, there'll be times of planting and after planting comes what? Harvest. We are planting and we are harvesting. Today, again, if you don't like the life that you have today, All you need to do is become a better farmer. Don't expect to have a a wonderful life when all you're doing is planting curses upon yourself, curses about others. That's why you got to be careful how you treat others because how you treat others is what's coming back to you. You got to be careful. You got to be careful what words you're speaking speaking over others, speaking over yourself because your words are seeds. The enemy, and I'll say this for those that, are, that, that understand spiritual warfare, the enemy, what he tries to do is get you to think his thoughts and say his words, to plant, come on, plant his thoughts and his words in your life because if he plants his words and his thoughts in your life, he already is setting up your next harvest and it's not going to be a good one. So there's seed time and harvest. This is true. There will always be cold and hot. Isn't that true? Right now we're supposed to be in Cali, a little colder season. It's a little colder. You know, my cousin, he comes from Pennsylvania, sitting on the front row. And the other day, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm freezing. And he just starts laughing about, forgot that he's from Pennsylvania. And they have below zero temperatures over there in the winter. And they get snowed in. And I'm like, it's like 65. And I'm like, I need a jacket. Right. But, but there, there's always cold and summer there's, there, and winter, day and night. Like I don't wake up. This is a law. I don't wake up uh, in the middle of the night. I just, and, I, and I say, I just pray, Lord, that the sun will come up tomorrow. And the reason I don't pray for the sun to come up tomorrow, because there's always be day and what follows day is night and what follows night is day and what follows winter is spring and what follows spring is summer and what follows spring, the summer is fall and what follows fall is winter. I, I, I couldn't believe I did that. I'm just... But we already know how it's going to turn out. And so there, therefore, there's a lot of life that's predictable. Life is predictable because of the spiritual law and the natural law of seed time and harvest. It's true. So let's talk about three truths about seeds and harvest. And I, I want to just slow down a little bit. Your thoughts are seeds. Your words are seeds. Your actions are seeds. Your money is seed. But don't expect to get a harvest a blessing if you've never planted a seed of blessing. Don't expect to have a great harvest when you're only planting curses. So let's talk about three truths about, about seeds. Truth number one, God has given us the miracle of the gift of seeds. Out of all the advances that mankind has made through science, they have not been able to create a seed yet. So I could take the greatest minds in the world and say, all I want you to do is one thing, create a seed that can grow and produce. And they say, well, how do we do that? Well, I know you don't know how to do that because only God can do that. This miracle of seed is what keeps us alive. I know we're not farmers, literally, 
because we're not in Oklahoma or Alabama or someplace that they actually farm or up north. We're here, we go to the store and we go to the produce aisle. And we, we, we're, like, we're just judging the fruit. Let me see if this one is plump enough. We're knocking on, we're, we're knocking on the watermelon. We want to get the crispiest salad. We want to get the biggest carrots. Is this sweet corn or not? We, we have gone to the point that we're so disconnected from farmland that we just take it for granted that we could go in there and get food. But understand this, without seed, there is no food. If for some reason the power of the seed dies, Within months, three months period of time, we're all going to die of starvation. You're going to have to live off canned foods. But after your canned foods are done, if there's no more seed, time, and harvest, we all die. Out of all the advances, I know we're trying to save the, the ozone layer, but we are make sure we're going to save the seed. So he's given us seed. Seed is the ability to reproduce. And cause multiplication, increase growth. Every single one of us, because we have seed, is that we have the ability to reproduce, cause multiplication, increase, and growth. If the seed is a source of anything. It's a source of prosperity. It's a source of food. It's a source of fortunes. It's a source of, source of offspring. It's a source of fruit. It's a source of crops. It's a source of plants. The seed. The seed. And God's given us all seed. And you may be thinking, I don't have seed. Yes, you do have seed. You have words, you have thoughts, you have actions, you have clothes, you got money. Every one of those things, everything you have is also a seed that you could use it to produce. God has given us seeds to plant. He gives us, he gives seed to sow. So he doesn't, doesn't just give seed so you could have seed. And all seed is not just, all seed is not to be eaten. There's some seed that's supposed to be planted. The difference between poor people and rich people, poor people eat all their seed. That means this is what they do. Whatever money comes in, I spend every single bit of it and I make sure if I have a little bit left, I have to go to Walmart because I have to go ahead and consume all my seed. See, but rich people, this is what they think about. They think I can't eat my seed because if I eat all my seed, I eat my harvest. So they think about saving, they think about investing, they think about giving. And every time we give and every time we invest, we plant seed. And every time you plant seed, this is what God can do. He can bless what you've planted, but he cannot bless what you've not planted. See, God can't even break this law of seed time and harvest for you. Stop expecting a harvest in a place you've never invested in. You want to have a better marriage? Start investing better words. Come on. You want to have a better life? Come on. You want to have a better life? You got to start investing and then you can expect a return. You want to have be more educated, more skilled? You're going to have to invest in education so you can reap the rewards of benefits of having that education. But there is no harvest where there is no planting. Are you still with me? So he gives us seed to, to, to plant. That, was, that means, in 2 Corinthians 9 says, God is the one who gives seed to those who plant. Now, this is what God realizes. There are people that are better planters than others. That means there's people that you give them some and they, they will plant it. They'll plant some of it. And this is what God, God already knows based on their, their, their desire to plant and their ability to plant and the, the truth that they plant, I'm going to release more seed to planters. Now, what happens is if you never plant seed and get a harvest, you're going to have to depend on someone else's harvest to live. But you'll never have your own harvest for yourself. You guys understand this? Come on. Life is not, me and Lisa have been married for 30-something years, 33 years. Is that right, Lisa? 34? Okay, we added a year. When, since when? All right, so we got 34 now. 34, 35, 36, 30, 30. Okay, we're 34 now. But this is what I do know. We have a great marriage, but we don't have a great marriage because we're lucky. We have a great marriage because we're good farmers. 
If you plan like we plan, you'd have the marriage we have. If you plan like we plan, you'd have the life we have. If you say the words we say, you'd have the harvest we have. Come on, if you work the way we work, you'll have the harvest we have. Life is not luck. Life is farming. You got to know this. Stop expecting God to do something for you that only farming can accomplish. Planting seeds. You know, we're living in, a, in, in an entitled world. I deserve, deserve, I deserve it. Why? Why do you deserve it? Because you're alive and breathing? Take that attitude to your job and see how long you last at a job. You know, what you put in is what you're going to get out. Stop allowing the media to lie to you that you deserve something with no investment. Someone just give it to me. There you go. And that's, it's, it's okay when you're in need to receive a blessing. But never get to the point that you're so stuck in receiving a blessing that you never get to the point that you plant your own seed and get your own harvest and then become a blessing. Come on, give God some praise. We could, we could change our lives if we learn these principles. God has given us seed for food. It's true. Is this true? Even if you're an atheist, this is true. So far, there's nothing that you could deny what we talked about, even if you're atheist in this room. You need seed to have food. It is never part, it was never part of God's plan for anyone to be in lack, to be in poverty, or to be hungry. He gave us seed to provide everything that we need in abundance. Stop focusing on how much seed you don't have and start working with the seed you do have. Because the seed that you do have can produce growth. The seed that you do have could produce multiplication. The seed that you do have, come on, could cause massive breakthrough and abundance in your life. And if you plant the seed you do have, this is what's going to happen. It's going to produce more seed. So you could be a bigger blessing. How do we get to this place as a church? We got to this place of the church where, you know, thousands of people are coming, uh, even on a Wednesday night, and we have multiple services tonight. We're in L.A., we have a service, and in downtown, uh, we have service. In Arizona, we have a service. How did this all start? Farming. We just started with a few people and just started planting love. And we started getting love back. We started planting, meeting needs. And, and as we met needs, God gave us more seed. And God gave us more resources. And God gave us a warehouse. And God gave us every time we planted, we couldn't outgive God. Because every time you plant, it's seed, time, and harvest. And you can't run from a harvest because it's in your seed. Stop wishing for a harvest and start planting for a harvest. Could it be you're praying for a harvest in a field that you've never planted in? You will harvest where you plant. You will harvest what you plant. I said again. You will harvest where you plant. And you know what's so great about this? What you plant. I love this because if I have the right seed, I could produce the right harvest everywhere I go. And that's why we go into the hoods of Compton and we go into the toughest neighborhoods in California and we're coming in with some seed that brings salvation, that brings freedom, that brings new beginnings. We're the ones that plant the seed. And when you plant the seed, you can change a family, you can change a person, you can change a city, you can change a nation with the right seed. We got power. We got the power. That's another song right there of the 80s or 90s, whatever it was. We have the power of the seed. God has given you power, the power of the seed, so you can, you can determine what kind of life you want. It's for food. Someone said for food, for provision, for nourishment, to provide energy, to promote growth, sustenance, income, resources, earnings, fortune, money, wealth. It produces all of it. Seed. That's why investors, they talk about seed. A seed investment. They talk about it all the time. 
investors that aren't even believers, that aren't Christians. They practice the law of seed, time, and harvest. They're not going to heaven unless they receive the seed of God's word and the seed of Jesus Christ and the seed of eternal life. But understand this, they're prospering here financially and prospering in their business because they're practicing the law of seed, time, and harvest. Say this, I am not just a consumer, I'm an investor. I plant seed. And the seed I plant, God blesses and it turns into a harvest. I am not a victim anymore because I'm a farmer. You can ask me what my future harvest is and I'll tell you because I know what I planted. And what I planted, I'm going to get more of. Give the Lord a hand if you receive that. Seeds, check this out, have an assignment to grow. The seed knows what to do when it's planted. The ground knows what to do with the seed. The question is, do you know what to do with the seed? Seeds grow when they're planted. Understand, this offering that you bring next Sunday is seed you're planting. And that seed is commanded to grow. And it can't do nothing but grow. The only seed that can't grow is the seed that remains in your hand. Only, this is simple. Only planted seeds grow and produce harvest. Seeds that aren't planted have potential. But the potential is released when you plant it. This is what you do. You plant what you want. And that's why you never pay evil for evil. Because if someone is planted seeds of evil in you and you plant seeds of evil in them, you are now producing evil in your future. Well, you made me do it. You, they made you plant bad seed. Understand this. This is, the, this is the problem. This is the problem we have. Is that we think we're planting bad seeds. And because you're not experiencing immediate harvest or consequences, you think you're getting away with it. But your seed will match up with your harvest. Well, your seed will catch up to you. Right? It messes with your confidence. It messes with your joy. It messes with your expectation. Planting bad seeds doesn't produce good results, not even in your emotions. That's why as a nation, we're becoming more depressed and we're becoming more confused and we're becoming more anxious. And this is the reason we've been planting a lot of bad seed and now we're starting to reap the harvest in our children. Seeds have an assignment to grow. In Mark 4.32, but when it is sown, when it is planted, it grows up and becomes greater. That's it. So all I need to do, be careful that you're not tricked by the devil to make you think that all you have is your seed. And once you lose that, you got nothing. And this is why, this is what will keep you in poverty. What will keep you in poverty is fear of loss. You rather buy it, spend it on ice cream than invest it in a stock or give it in a church offering. Truth number two. I got a whole series on this, I guess. That's what Christian says. Every time you preach, you got a whole series. I go, I know, I only get to two points. I need to have like a whole Saturday to teach you a conference on seed time of harvest so you can start like developing this, get it in your spirit and start, start changing your thinking so you can start changing your life. Understand this, either you're waiting for a handout or you're going to be the person that has a harvest to give it. Come on, are you, come on, are you finally want to make up your mind? I'm a farmer, I got seed and if I plant it, I'll reap for harvest. This is, I'll never be without clothes. Why? Because I give, all, I give away clothes all the time. And I get it back. I'll never be without love. Because I give love to everybody and everybody loves me back. It's just, I, this is it comes back. This is it comes back. Right? I'll never be without financial seed 
because I'm constantly planting seed in the kingdom of heaven. So I keep getting a return on the investment. I get a harvest so I can continue doing it. Do you think God wants to continue blessing you so you can be a blessing? Come on, take the seed you have and plant it. We'll never see someone get saved until we give them the seed of God's word, the gospel. And until there's the only way for someone to get saved is for them to hear the good news about Jesus Christ, that he died for their sins, that he rose from the dead, that he suffered for every wrong thing that they've done, and he conquered death to give them eternal life. And if they just believe in him, they could be forgiven, they could be set free, they could have a new life, they could have eternal life. Someone has to hear it for the seed to be planted to produce eternal life and salvation where there is no preaching of the gospel there is no one getting saved but everywhere the gospel the word of God is preached lives are transformed people are set free people receive eternal life and people find their purpose give God some praise because we have the greatest seed in the world it's the word of God <laughs> truth number two seeds only produce after their own kind in Genesis 1.11, God said, let the earth grow plant life. Plants yield in seeds and fruit trees bearing fruit with seeds inside. Is this true? Amen. Science. Each according to its own kind throughout the earth. And that's what happened. See, if you don't like the life we, you have today, all you need to do is change your seeds that you're planting. When we change the seeds, we are planting. We change our harvest. Life is not luck. Again, it's farming. Now this proves the evolution is not true. It, it's so funny how people believe in science until it's not convenient for this apple seed produces apples and not oranges because I really want apples. You don't have to worry about that. If you plant an apple seed, I don't care how, it don't look like an apple, but if it's an apple seed, it'll produce what? Tomato seeds produce what? You don't have to worry about it. No farmer is staying up overnight and saying, I, don't, I wonder what harvest is going to come. You're just rolling dice because every seed produces after its own kind. And that's why evolution can't be true and it can't be proven because there is no human that could produce a monkey. And there's no monkey that could produce a human. And there's no fish that could produce a bird or an alligator. Because every six, a dog will produce a dog. It might be a dog with spots, but it's still a D-O-G. It doesn't turn into a cat. It doesn't come out with feathers. Because every seed produces after its own kind. Humans only produce humans. You can't change the law because it's the law of seed time and harvest. That's why it's called a theory of evolution, and it's a dumb theory because it's never been proven in a laboratory. All right? Atheist, just stay right here. We're trying to build your faith. Don't get all mad. Because, see, when, you're, when you don't want to believe, you start thinking about all these arguments. And, I don't know, but what about, what about the caveman? The caveman was a man without hygiene. That's all he was. You leave your husband long enough without taking showers, he looked just like him, Neanderthal. He looked just like him. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. In Galatians 6, 7, it says, do not deceive yourself. Why does it say this? Because we can deceive ourselves. This is what I've learned about life. We are really good sales per people. We close ourselves on really dumb ideas. It ain't work for nobody, but it's going to work for you, right? I'm going to do it wrong, but I'm going to get away with it. I'm not going to get caught. It's going to be okay. I could commit adultery. I could flirt with the, with the guy at work. No one's ever going to find out. You're deceiving yourself. That's bad seed. I just think about seed I'm planting. That's all I think about because I already know if I plant the right seed, I don't have to worry about it. You know why some of you are stressed out about your life? You're stressed out about your life because you're not intentional about your seed you're planting. 
You cannot have a great spiritual life if you don't plant some time, some seed time in studying the word, in going to church, in praying. Come on, you're not going to get a harvest in a place that you're not invested in. And what you invest in, you start getting harvest in, period. All right, look. Make no mistakes. No one makes... No one makes a fool of God. What he says, you can't change this principle. I, well, I don't believe it. It doesn't matter. It's, it's law. It's spiritual law. It's natural law. Understand, don't deceive yourself that you're going to break all the laws, but yet you're going to still get the great results. You're lying to yourself. That's why you could get divorced and leave the husband you got now. But if you keep planting the same seeds, farmer, you're going to make that relationship the same exact relationship you had now. How come my, my relationship all turn out the same? Because you're still planting the same seeds, homegirl. Well, I just need to move from San Bernardino. I don't care where you move. You can move to Hawaii. You can move to New York City. You can move in Beverly Hills. But there's a problem. If you're still planting bad seeds and you're still involved in a sinful lifestyle, I don't care what you do. You're still going to produce death, destruction, misery, abuse, ruin everything because you're planting the wrong seeds. Stop being a victim and become a better farmer. facts. Look at this. Says, you will reap exactly what you plant. Science. I believe in science. You will reap exactly what you... You're not going to reap kind of what you plant. You're going to reap exactly what you plant. That's why you got to be careful that you and your husband and your fiance are planning to get married, but you're in fornication, feeding your lust, feeding your pleasures and not denying your flesh. But yet you want to have a happily ever after marriage and understand your foundation is corrupted with bad seed. And if you don't repent of that, you're going to harvest it when you get married. If you can't control your lust now, what makes you think you're going to control your lust when you get married? Your fornication is just going to turn into adultery. That's it. I don't trust you. I don't know. I don't trust you. I know you don't trust them because I understand. And I, you don't trust her. How can you trust her if she says she lives for God, and she, but yet she's sleeping with you? If she's not true to God, what makes you think she's going to be true to you? Come on, somebody has to plant some different seed. Come on, I want to have a great marriage. I want to have a great future. Come on, there's going to be some need to plant some different seed. You're going to reap exactly what you plant. Okay, that's just bonus stuff. Now, don't get mad, just change your seed. I'm mad. You talk, you, well, you, why are you talking about me? I'm not talking about you. I don't even know where you're at. I'm talking about your seed. Don't get offended. Get offended at your seed and repent of your seed. Get disgusted with your seed and get disgusted with your life. And said, I'm done tonight. I'm not a victim. This is a result of the choices. I'm choosing to plant better seed so I can have a better life. Everyone who plants gets exactly what they planted. That's why if you're talking about people, look at look what the scripture says here. We don't have enough time in this church. We don't have enough time. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's finish this scripture because... All right, whatever we deal... Look, check this out. Whatever we deal out will be dealt back to us. Matthew 7, 1, 2. Now, now, this, this is the, 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 the law of God. It, 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 and this is a law. Treat others the way you like to be. It's called a golden rule. Someone said the golden rule. Treat others the way you like to be treated. Don't treat others the way they're treating you. If you don't mature past this and you're constantly reacting, they punch you, you punch them, they insult you, you insult them, you're going to remain a baby for the rest of your life with the same life you got today. Well, she hit me first. 
they flipped me off first on the freeway. You're too easy to get off track. You're too easy to get the wrong, wrong, wrong seat. The devil has you on autopilot. He doesn't even assign a demon to you anymore. You just get affected by people all the time. They get on your nerves. You cuss them out. You don't know who you're messing with. You start getting ghetto with them. I'm from San Bernardino, the IE 909. You forgot who you are. You forgot who you represent. If you'll start planting seeds, come on, the way God plants seeds. God's not giving you those bad seeds. God is giving you the good seed. He didn't save you to go out and continue planting what you were planting. He saved you and he gave you new seed so you can have a new life. New results. A new family. A new marriage. New emotions. New joy. New peace. Let's, let's end it right here. Matthew 7, 1. Look what it says here. Check this out. Don't judge so you won't be judged. Because if you judge, you're going to have a harvest. Now, understand this. You're not going to get a seed of judging back to you. You're going to get a harvest of it. The people people will be judging you from miles around. Attractive. We got to judge her. We got to judge her. I don't know why. I got to judge her. I got to judge them. I got to judge them. If you feel like everybody's judging you, I already know why it's happening. You're judging everybody. Well, I don't trust nobody. You don't trust nobody. I keep going, right? This is what I've learned. Uh, I, I, sh I show mercy all the time because I need mercy. Because I make a lot of mistakes. Does anybody need some mercy? I need a break, so I give a break. I give a break all the time. I remember one time, me and Lisa went to um, Panda Inn. And Lisa ordered some hot tea. And when she got the hot tea, the waiter came with the hot tea. Just, I mean, it was like 190 degrees. I don't know, it was hot. He drops it on her lap. We have to go to the emergency room right away. She starts blistering. It's just horrible, right? So we go, we go and, and then, um, so I go to work the next day. I say, man, this is crazy. We, went to we didn't even get to eat the Chinese food. That was a dud, man. <laughs> and this is what happened. And then they, people said, sue them. And, and I go, nah, I ain't suing them because where I'm headed, there's going to be a lot of people after me. And I don't want to get a harvest of suing for some hot tea. The, the waiter made a mistake. We'll go ahead and let that go because where I'm headed, I don't want to have a harvest of lawsuits. So I'm not just going to go ahead and just trying to sue everybody to get my way. I'm not saying if you have a legitimate lawsuit, that's, that's what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about suing for every little thing. Understand you'll never be rich. You'll never get ahead. You'll never prosper. All you have is a harvest of loss in your life. Understand, if you have a legit, legit lawsuit, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking to you trying to be an ambulance chaser. You, you, I mean, you got an accident and, you're, and, and you just got a little crick in the neck and you're... <laughs> Give me a can. You don't even stand in the healing line because you don't want to get healed because it messed up your lawsuit. You're, you're more, you have a vision of a disability and God has a vision of purpose and God has a vision of healing and God wants to raise you up and give you a testimony and you're thinking so small. Your seeds of smallness are stopping you from becoming great. All right. This is what I'm saying. You miss Wednesday night, you're missing... You need to know this law. If you don't know this law, you're going to be guessing in your life, hoping. You know what seed time and harvest does? It takes the guesswork out of it. If I plant it, I reap it. So this is it. You'll receive the same judgment you give. Whatever you deal out will be dealt out to you. Matthew 7, 1, 2. And Philip says, don't criticize people. Or you will not, and you will not be criticized. How powerful is that? If you don't become a critic, you won't have people criticizing you. But if you become a critic, everybody's going to be criticizing you. Be careful that you're not trying to be the Holy Ghost. 
Let the Holy Ghost do the work. It's not your job. To, I, let me check the fruit. Let me make sure. That's God's job. He's a farmer. He's, come on. He, he's, the, he's the one in charge of the vineyard. Your job is to love people. Your job is to give them the word. Your job, come on, is to encourage them. Let God deal with that. Because if you start criticizing the church, start criticizing your leaders, start criticizing your bosses, start criticizing everything in your life, this is what's going to happen. You're going to become a critic that's constantly be, being criticized. Proverbs eleven twenty five. Look what it says. No, no, no. It says, "For you will be judged by the way you criticize others, and the measure you give will be the measure you receive." Matthew five seven. Happy are people who show mercy because they will receive mercy. It's simple. I want to change my future. I just changed my seed today. I'm not going to let somebody. I'm not going to give insult for insult. I'm not going to let you mess up my future. Just because you're throwing out bad seed doesn't mean I need to receive it. And how do you know you're receiving bad seed? It's starting to affect the way you think, the way you talk. There's, just because bad seed is being thrown your way doesn't mean you need to meditate on it and let it settle in your heart and start acting like the seed that was thrown your way. There's a time in your life when they're insulting you, you just bless them. So why are you blessing why are you blessing her? I would have knocked her out. She deserves it. I can't believe you're putting up with it. I said, I'm just too smart. I'm a farmer. I don't understand. She does not control my future. She might have a bad attitude, but she's not going to mess with my attitude. I'm going to keep my joy. No thanks. I'm going to keep my joy. I'm going to keep my peace. I'm going to keep my hope. I'm going to keep my dreams. And I'm going to keep my future harvest. The best is yet to come. How do you know? How do you know? Because I know the seed that I planted. Come on, parents, if you planted the seed of God's word in your children, you don't have to worry about them coming back because you already know what seed you planted in your kids. They have to come back and live for God because of the seed that you planted. Come on, mama. Come on, daddy. Forget about how they're looking. You planted seed. Expect a harvest. All right. How many receive something from God tonight? Let's all stand up. Uh, no one leave right now. Plant bad seed by leaving early. <laughs> all right. Now, the Bible says, check this out. The Bible says that God's word, God's word is seed. Now what happens with seed, it could fall on good soil or it could fall on hard soil. Your heart is the soil. How does your heart get hard? How your heart gets hard is you hear truth. You hear about Jesus. And understand this. You reap and you sow. And the Bible says this, the wage of sin is death. The law's already in place. There's no way to undo it. You, already, you and I have already planted bad seed. We've sinned. There's nobody here that says, I've never sinned. I've never planted bad seeds. You're lying right now. Bad seed. But the results and the harvest of a bad seed or sin planted is death. And death means this, well, I've I sinned, I ain't not dead yet. You don't understand, it's spiritual death first. This is what begins to die, your emotions. Death means the misery of the soul caused by sin. That means you can't continue sinning without eventually getting depressed, tormented in your spirit, have sleepless nights, have a lot of fear. Can y'all hear us online? No, we can't hear it online. Alright. See how the devil works? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Gavin's gonna say you call me the devil. No, I'm just kidding. Gavin, relax. Calm down. But death, someone say death. So don't overlook the misery of your soul. And think, well, it's just I have depression or 
I'm just anxious or I'm just tormented at night or I'm just hearing voices. Understand, it's the results of sin. And that's why as a society, we're more confused. Um, we're angrier. We're more emotionally dysfunctional. And everything's falling apart. And I'll tell you why. The wage of sin is death. It's called a harvest. And you can't go to the local drugstore to fix your harvest. You got to go to the Lord of the harvest to erase your harvest and give you new seeds so you can have a new harvest. Okay? But it's a, it's a choice. Okay, so death also means ruin. The more you get involved in sin, the more you ruin everything. You ruin your life, you ruin your emotions, you ruin your body, you ruin your relationships, you ruin your kids, you ruin everything you touch. Eventually, it ends in ruin because you're making bad choices and you think, I'm so unlucky. How crazy. Some of you are mad at God for, for the seeds that you planted. Well, God, why'd you let it happen? Because no, no, why'd you let it happen? You planted those seeds. What you, do, you can never get right in, until you stop blaming everybody including God he goes I'm your answer I am not your problem I'm a good God and every good and perfect gift comes from me so if you want good come to me I'll forgive you of everything you've ever done I'm not here to judge you I'm here to save you I'm here to restore you and give you a brand new star but you gotta not harden your heart how do you harden your heart you hear the word and you resist it you hear the word and you resist it you hear the word and you resist it and you know what the craziest thing you could get to the point that you're gonna have to be broken where it looks like you're beyond repair to finally call on Jesus because heart soul has to be broken up to put seed in it again. So be careful that you're not, the time for salvation, the time for change is right now. Receive the seed of the incorruptible word of God, Jesus Christ, and receive eternal life. Today's your day. <clears throat> Death also means not only ruin, not only misery of the soul, but it also means addiction, bondage. This is what it means. That you can be, be involved in a, in a lifestyle, a sinful lifestyle, and it not take over your life. Sin comes with chains. It comes with handcuffs. And you finally say, man, I wanna, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the misery it's causing me. I'm tired of the ruin I'm causing my, myself, my family. I'm tired. And you promise yourself you'll never do it again. But you do it again. I'll tell you why you do it again. You're, in, you're a slave to your sin. And only Jesus can set you free. Who the, the seed, who the son sets free, is free indeed. Come on, that's why the girl, the, come on, that was an alcoholic. She could get set free when she calls on Jesus. I couldn't overcome, I couldn't overcome the abuse. I was numb in my pain. But then there was a God that came in through a message. I received Jesus and he set me free. I no longer lead the alcohol. Jesus numbs my pain. Jesus heals me. And number three. The wage of sin is death. The harvest of sin is death. Eternal misery in hell. And I'm telling you, you call on Jesus. He'll save you from your misery. He'll save you from your cycle of destruction. He'll save you from your addiction. And he'll save you from hell. Because he paid the full price for every wrong thing we've ever done. And I just, all he wants to do is by faith. It's a gift. Receive it. I'm going to count to three. Say, Pastor, that's me. I want to receive Jesus. That's a seed of eternal life. I want to be forgiven. I want to be set free. Now understand, you're going to make a choice and it will be a seed. If you accept Jesus as your Savior, you've received the seed of eternal life, the seed of abundant life, the seed of a new beginning. You receive it. Freedom. If you say no, that's a seed. That's an action. And you'll reap the repercussions of that. And this will be the repercussions. Your life will be the same and only get worse from here on out. Say, Pastor, you're cursing me. I'm not cursing you. I just know the road you're on. And if you keep sowing that seed, I don't, I'm not, I, well, you're a prophet. I don't need to be a prophet. I already know the seed that you planted. And because I know the seeds that you planted, I already know the harvest you're going to get. I know people, like I talk to people all the time. I already know where they're headed by the decision they're making and how they're talking. I already know. I, I don't have to guess. I go, look, you keep on that path. You're going to ruin your life. You're going to ruin your marriage. You're going to ruin your kids. You're going to ruin your emotions. You're going to ruin everything if you stay on that track. Are you cursing me? I'm not cursing you. You're cursing you. Okay, let's end it. 
I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes online. Give your life to Jesus. In LA, give your life to Jesus. In Arizona, give your life to Jesus. Come on. In Arrowhead, give your life to Jesus. If you're on the road in your car, stop your car. Give your life to Jesus. Come on. This is the most important seed you could ever receive. It's the word of God. Salvation today. One. I want you to raise your hand if you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to recommit your life to the Lord. Say, Pastor, I don't know if I were to die right now, go to heaven, but I want to give my life to Jesus. Two. And when I say three, I want you to raise your hand all over this building. Don't leave it the same way you came in. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over the building. I want to receive Jesus. I want to receive Jesus. I want a new beginning. I want to be set free. I want eternal life. I want to know if I were to die, go to heaven. I want those to raise their hands. I want you to come forward real quick. I'm just going to pray with you. Will you give me the honor? If you raise your hand, take a step. There's an action. There's a seed. And it's going to produce salvation. It's going to produce a new beginning. You're going to leave your old life in those seats and start over. Come on. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? Go up there with you. Come on. Someone, you come. Raise your hand. Just come up. This is your day of salvation. No one's going to get saved without the seed of action today. Now believe it. Come on, church. Let's give this a hand. Ivory online. If you're online, stand up right now. Come on, God's touching you right now. His spirit is touching you. Come on, there's someone's daughter here. There's someone's son here. Come on, there's someone's mama here. Come on, they're here. They're surrendering their life to Jesus. Awesome. I, how many want to hear more of this? Oh, this is I'll say this. Show up Sunday. I'm going to tie in. I'm going to tie in some of this seed. What I want to talk about most likely on, what I'm going to talk about most likely on Sunday is the, the type of seed that we could plant. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so you don't want, let's come Sunday ready to receive from God and ready to give. Okay, proud of you. Who needs Jesus? All of us. Who needs to be set free? All of us. Who needs to be healed? All of us. That's it. Who needs eternal life? Every one of us. <laughs> Who needs to learn a new way of living? Every one of us. How crazy that you would think that you're going to go one more lap, one more lap, sowing the seed that you were planted, but this time the harvest will be different. You're deceiving yourself, homie. It's not real. It's not real. You're lying to yourself. Say, man, I can't change me. I know you can't change you, but Jesus can change you. Come on, he's the one that sets you free. It's not your miracle power. It's his miracle power. He'll set you free. He'll give you, someone's going to get healed of us. They're going to, someone's going to get healed of schizophrenia today. They're going to be healed of hearing voices today. They're going to be set free from an addiction. Uh, come on, someone's going to set free from heroin today. Come on, someone's going to set free from a lifestyle of weed and gangbanging and anger and abuse. It's breaking now in the name of Jesus. It's breaking now in the name of Jesus. It's breaking now in the name of Jesus. Gener generational curses are broken now in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. We're going to receive the word of God, Jesus Christ, through our mouth by confessing. This is how we plant seed in our own hearts, our mouth. So bow your heads, close your eyes. Say this. Jesus, I thank you for not giving up on me, for giving your body as a seed to produce new life in me. You gave your best so I could give you my life. Today, Lord, I recognize, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I've been playing that we're going to put on the screen right now, which is a pre-order link to two actual original Christmas songs. Yes, so we have Silent Night and we have Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. We did these songs last year, so you made these may sound familiar to you but we haven't released them so this year we're going to release them as a gift for our church so go ahead and scan this qr code that's on the screen right here right between us <laughs> yes absolutely and it's coming we every single year in january we do a 21 day the 21 day is the time of it's a time where we go deeper as a church but we prepare before we've never done this before the worship team is also giving you something to do that's good. Yes, so next year in 2024, during our fast, we created 
a brand new prayer album yeah, yeah. and i'm really excited about this song we just recorded something yesterday and i feel like this song and really just the whole album is just gonna speak to you during this time of prayer and fasting yeah. and it's just gonna be a tool to an extra tool for when you're fasting and praying um to just think about what god has done in this year and really get you focused on what god wants to do through you for the next year yeah it's literally fast you're all gonna be listening to music we're not gonna be watching shows like we normally do when you fast but everybody's listening to worship so we want to equip you as a church to be able to do that so we have to look out for that god bless you have an incredible rest of your night happy holidays and hopefully we'll